Bill, let me uh, dive a little deeper into your robo ETF. You, this tracks a, a global index of companies involved in robotics and, and automation. How does the ETF pick stocks, or how do you pick stocks, and, and where does AI fit in right now with robotics and automation? Well, I guess we kind of still do a little bit of the old school approach. I mean, we uh, sort of pride ourselves on being industry experts. We have a team of, uh, of seven PhDs in our team, um, some of the world's um, renowned thought leaders and entrepreneurs that have, have built businesses, and they were very helpful in the early days of helping us create the ecosystem to invest in robotics and AI. Because when we started this 10 years ago, um, you know, we recognized that there were some pure play, you know, companies, but there wasn't, you know, kind of a GICS classification system for them. So we had to go in and produce that. So we came out and defined a company as either a technology or an application. So the technology is what makes the autonomous system work. Uh, the computing, the AI, the processing, the sensing, the actuation, and the integration of those technologies. And then um, the use cases, so where is robotics being um, deployed? Well, we knew it was in industrial manufacturing. You know, how about into healthcare, into ag, uh, into security and surveillance, um, you know, into um, um, healthcare and, and others. And as the use cases evolve, those sectors would, would obviously uh, evolve. And so we go out and we basically invest in what we believe are, are the best in class companies. Um, we do a uh, essentially a proprietary ranking where 50% of our ranking is to identify companies that have high revenue purity. And the other 50%, um, we do a deep bottoms up analysis by looking at their market share leadership, their technological leadership, and understanding where and how they're, they're investing. And that's a, a, a difficult component to just capture through an AI because you have to understand their businesses and where they're investing their R&D, look at where they've invested in buying companies and what their ROIs have been, what their track record is for integration, et cetera. And so um, we then apply an ESG screen to this and that out pops an investable universe and we take the top names from there and, uh, and then put it into uh, a uh, ETF wrapper. You know, you, you're robotics. So robotics was, I mean, it's been, I'm a science fiction fan. I grew up reading science fiction. I still do. And the robots are stealing our jobs, stealing our souls. This is one of the oldest tropes in science fiction. There are stories going back to the 40s uh, about this. I, I guess, um, it, it, does this somehow have more currency these days? Are robots stealing our jobs? It, it seems to me if robots are stealing our jobs, they're doing a pretty bad job of it. <laughs> There's more jobs yeah. than people are. Uh, at, at the moment. Can you address that old trope, the robots are stealing our job and guess, it suddenly hit I a singularity? You, you took my line, Bob, I like it. Um, I, I think it's true. If you look at the, the companies and the countries that have the highest utilization of automation, guess what? They have the lowest unemployment rates. I mean, if robots are stealing our jobs, you know, go figure, we have 11 million unfilled job listings in the U.S. Um, if you look at the, the density of, of, of robots globally, um, there's going to be about 3.4 million um, industrial robots installed by the end of this year. That is in comparison to a, a, a global economy that employs about 500 million um, in, uh, in manufacturing employment. So uh, we have a long ways to go. If you think about the number of data scientists and people that are trained in AI globally, it's a de minimis figure. Uh, I think it's going to take a long time for this to happen. But more importantly, what's coming out from robotics and AI is better productivity. I mean, we went into the pandemic and came out of the pandemic with 1% higher GDP with 6.5 million workers, okay? That is the definition of productivity. And I think you're going to see a, a tsunami effect in terms of prices coming down uh, a, a, as a result of um, deflationary pressures from these technologies. And uh, I can't predict everything, but I, I, I have high confidence this is going to be very additive to our economies globally and importantly just generating new growth. Let's go back to robots, not worry about AI. Is robot deployment accelerating? Is there a way to measure that? You know, you know my question, are we, are, are, are we reaching some point where suddenly there's been a big increase in the use of, of, of robots uh, in no, the last the, few years? Or The International Robot Federation releases data um, yearly about um, the, uh, the deployments and it's, it's I would say it's somewhat measured. I mean, it's roughly around 15%. I mean, no one wants to go out and add too much capacity too quickly and then find out that maybe uh, the, the industry is a little more cyclical than they might have thought. 
I mean, these are clearly, you know, um, uh, you know, heavy, intensive capital deployments. Uh, when you look at the, the companies that supply the actuation, that's what makes the robot move with submillimeter accuracy, semiconductors, et cetera. There's a lot of, of uh, supply chain that's tied in that also has a, a very measured approach uh, to their capacity and growth. So um, while I wish that the industry was growing 50% per year, that's really not the case. You know, I would say you know, somewhere in the low to mid-teens is a good way to sort of think about the growth.